earlier on this week, WIEC released the examination results for the period of May, June 2014 uh, for the West African Senior School uh, Certificate Examination. Um, the results uh, represented a 28.11% increase in the grades from A1 to C6. And um, today in the studio, we'll be discussing exactly what the educational system uh, is going through. And uh, with me in the studio, I have Mr. Jedi Pabufio. Uh, he's a school improvement consultant. And we're going to be talking about the results, what kind of impact do these results have on us, and uh, what kind of graduates are we going to be churning out. So good morning. Good morning. How are you? Not bad, fine. Thank you. Good. Thank you for joining us uh, in the studio. Um, first off, the councils um, said that students did slightly better in 2014 as compared to 2000 things okay. which such comes together such as poor infrastructure and resources available at hand for these students and for teachers as well okay um, I'm talking about subjects where probably it's practical based subject and they haven't got the required infrastructure practical things to be able to carry out experiments and things like that so okay. that could also be a contributory factor another area we could also look at is um, teacher quality Teachers need lots of effective professional development in service training to upgrade their skills in line with the 21st century technology and mm -hmm. that probably that is also not happening there. Another area is we currently we all acknowledge that not to not all children have the same ability. So I'm still wondering why why having gone abreast with time to so realize that it's about time that they differentiate the kind of exams that we put in front of the children. So, if you spot a child who is not academically inclined, mm -hmm. we should have a tiered level of exam such that we could enter some students maybe sitting the foundation exam right. and some students will see the higher exam. So those that are academically inclined will be challenged to see the higher exam. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not saying that the grading system must be the same. We could have a system where you say, okay, why any student that gets entered for the foundation exam could be graded from C to F. Right. Anyone that sits the higher exam could start from A1 all the way through. Okay. So from that perspective, you, re you realize that our results will be much better than 28%. Because if the child is not academically inclined and the questions are challenging, mm. they are naturally bound to fail. So we set ourselves up for failure. Structures not working. Systems in this country, in the education sector, is also not working. And there's no accountability as well because I know historically 32% is not good, 19% is not good, 28% is not yeah. good. So what are we doing to resolve this issue? Okay, so I mean, you, you've mentioned a few things here which um, could affect the results, i.e., you know, resources, the teachers. Sorry. Yeah. All right. So as you can see here, we've got a, a shade of red, yellow, green. Yep. The reds are those that have underachieved. So as a classroom practitioner, as a classroom teacher. Right from entering test one, I would have seen that the first column, I've got five students that have failed. Right. So as a teacher, what do I do? It informs me of my planning. And also that information could be seen by someone else. And that person could query me as a teacher and ask me, what am I doing about these students? Right. So this sets benchmark for target for schools. Ministries, GES could use this as school inspector. Um, We've got to be mindful about the curriculum that we put in front of, of, of these kids. And yeah. personally, from my professional point of view, the curriculum needs a bit of tinkering here and there. And provide the children with the basic life skills and functional skills, which will let them thrive in the 21st century. And I think currently we're being shortchanged in. Let that plan work enshrine whatever acts in law so that no one tempers any successive governments will follow through mm -hmm. but when systems are done someone comes in it chops and change, then there's whole confusion it clouds and there's no sense of direction and yeah. that is what we lack in this country um do, do you feel that the various changes in educational reforms that we've had are part of the problem that we have in regards to our educational system that has been a contributory factor because when you put structures in place you've got to give it time for it to bear fruit. So for example, if there's something already in the pipeline, and then within the next two years, someone else comes, and then everything is thrown down the drain, then teachers become confused, parents become confused, and, and, and also it becomes a problem. Uh, career development is a, is a big issue 
you know, in other countries. Um, I, I personally feel it's something that we failed on um, because, you know, you can ask a child what they want to be, um, you know, in primary school and the same question in secondary school, obviously they may be different. But those questions are not being asked. How important is career development and, and, and these kind of interactions with students uh, prior to them even facing examinations? Yeah. Career development is very, is very important from the perspective that if you don't advise your students on career, different career pathways, what we're going to end up is that you have lots of graduates graduating from the same field that sector will become populated, saturated, saturated yeah. Yeah. and people will be complaining there are no jobs, while there are other skills, areas that they could retrain and get into. So what we tend to do is that Ghana needs to have a system where within the curriculum, there's going to be mapped out curriculum where they have maybe drop-down timetable, where that day, government gets career people, maybe engineers, social, whatever, whatever, into schools and they talk to these children about different career pathways, the, job, the kind of skills they need to have, what they, the kind of money they expect to have when they graduate, mm. so that the children are clear about different career. There are so many jobs out there but which some of the students don't even they know even about. Know That's exactly. true. Yeah. All right, um, we're going to put you on pause for a moment, Jedi, because um, in Studio A right now, we should have st um, Sandra on standby. No, not quite. Uh, we're just waiting to see if we've got any messages coming in from the general public about um, WIAC and the examinations and even the results. Um, okay, now we, we were talking about career development. Um, also, that work experience. Now, um, I went to school in the UK for a little bit, and um, one of the things that they did there was, once you've identified uh, a role that you want to actually play, it wasn't just a case of someone, you know, somebody coming in to come and tell you about it, because what somebody tells you is one thing. They would put you in a situation whereby you would actually see it for yourself uh, for a week, two weeks. And um, some people, even after that week or two weeks, came out and even said, you know what, I don't even want to do that anymore. That's not what I thought it would be. How do you think we can actually apply some kind of work experience into our studies? Absolutely. So uh, everything goes back to the curriculum again, the way we design our curriculum. Because, for example, you know in the UK from between year 10, that's when you go out for work experience. Yeah. So why can't we have a model here where within the uh, whatever JHS1 or whatever, you have it there and block that out and within that period, students go. I'm not saying that it should be a national thing where all students are sent out at the same time, yeah. but you could give could be a window yeah. and say between JHS 1 and JHS 3, students must be sent for work experience. And it's, it's, it's got to be very flexible. Students will have to be able to determine where they want to go. Yes, not and just then, forced into uh, Absolutely. Right and then sure. employers would re gladly receive them. So that is where you need to have private partnership with education as well, because the same employers that will come to your school to deliver career, Who they are the same employers which will gladly receive your graduates. Very so true. we need to. All right, uh, let's talk to Sandra, uh, who's in Studio A, where we should have some messages about the current topic that we're discussing. Um, Sandra. Yes. Hi, Benny. Hi. What are people saying about YEC and the results? Uh, lots of people sending in messages, and um, I'll start with Facebook. Um, I have one from Doku Simon who says, uh, My younger brother checked his results and it was terrible. I hope it is not a reflection of the general situation. God help us. Um, the next one is from Lily Lillian. And um, Lily says, I think the results we are getting is a depiction of the kind of curriculum we are using. I seriously don't trust our own system of examinations. And that is from Lily Lillian. Um, I'll go on to Twitter now and um, I have one from Papa Few and uh, Papa Few is saying we need to revise our tertiary entry requirements. Why shouldn't I be admitted to read English when I get all B's but fail maths? Right. Now that's an argument that I have heard before. Why can't someone be admitted to read English when he gets all B's but fail maths? Hmm. That's food for thought. Um, the next one is from Adams Aminu, and he says, let's simply go back to our SSS system, period. Okay, straight and simple. And then um, Rebecca Edu says, our students are simply not doing their best. The use of mobile phones is now too much in our schools. All we need is discipline. 
I agree with that 100%. We need a lot of discipline and focus from our students. And um, that's all the messages we have on our social media platforms. Back to you in the studio, Benny. Thank you so much for that, Sandra. And uh, yes, looks like the general public are pretty worried about our educational system. And it uh, uh, looks like we may actually need another reform or maybe go back to the drawing board in regards to curriculums. Thank you again, Sandra. Okay, now, um, Jedi, let's just ever so quickly touch on marking because um, I know that when it comes to marking, some people can be very ruthless. Um, what do you think would assist in regards, uh, when it comes to marking? Yeah, um, marking, we, we have to move towards what we call constructive marking, effective feedback. We have to move away from the system of 2 over 10, 3 over 10, because 2 out of 10 doesn't tell the students what they've done wrong. Okay. We have to move towards a system where you could say, Amma, you got 2 out of 10 because you left A, B, C, D out. So when you include A, B, C, D, mm. you are going to get 5 out of 10. I mean, that, that would be nice if we could uh, encourage our invigilators and examiners, markers to actually, you know, be proactive to be able to do so. I'm sure they've got their own challenges as well. But I want to say thank you for coming in this Welcome. morning, uh, educating us more about um, the YEC and the examinations. This has been Mr. Jedi Pabafio. He's a school improvement consultant. Thank you very much. You're sir. Welcome. All right.